In today's Hair of the Dog podcast episode, I am talking with previous student and great friend Kristen Murray about her first two years as a full-time dog photographer. You might have remembered her previous conversation way back in episode number 19 when she left her nine to five. We talked all about what kind of went into that decision and how that was for her. Well, today we're catching back up. She's hit six figures. She's killing it. She has some incredible business tips, including one particular change that helps her convert almost all of her inquiries. You're not going to want to miss this interview. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. If you're a pet photographer ready to make more money and start living a life by your design, you've come to the right place. And now, your host, pet photographer, travel addict, chocolate martini connoisseur, Nicole Begley. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Begley. And today, we've got a recap, a two-year jump back in time, see what's happening. Way back from episode number 19, we have Kristen Murray from Kristen Murray Photography, who left her nine to five two years ago, and she is here to report back on all the exciting, amazing, incredible things that have been going on for the past two years, um, all during a global pandemic, by the way. So hello, Kristen. Welcome back. Hi, Nicole. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for this conversation because I remember you were in Elevate way back in the day when you decided to leave that nine to five job. Oh, yeah. That was a big, scary decision. (laughs) It was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it was it was terrifying, but well worth it. Yeah. So yeah. glad I did it. Yeah. So we talked about in that episode kind of what went through your head and, you know, getting ready to make that decision. So if any of you guys mm-hmm. are out there and you're like feeling on the precipice or you want to know kind of what Kristen went through for that, definitely go back, listen to episode number 19. But yeah, you've had a busy couple years. Yep. <laughs> including, I mean, I'm looking at the list and I'm trying to figure out where to even start, but we'll sum this up with last year, 2021, you closed out as being your biggest year in business yet, hitting yep. that elusive six figure mark. So congratulations. For Thank that. you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What do you think was the change that allowed you to finally reach that goal? Um, I think it was just the extra months um, because I had quit my job in July 2020. So I only had really half the year to yep. work. You know, 2021, I had the entire year. And it, it just, I think also I did a book project in 2020. So that kind of like kicked off, you know, people knowing about me and mm-hmm. books, um, that I'm out there. And um, I also found a way to like, you know, winners are pretty slow for photographers. I found a way to combat that. Um, yeah. So I just, I had the entire year to work. Right. Right. Yeah. That's fantastic. So yeah, let's jump back to that book project. So you did that in 2020. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, one of the biggest keys I think in business and getting your business going and ramping it up is this awareness and kind of hitting a critical mass of awareness in your market. Mm-hmm. which really only comes from photographing dogs and talking to people and getting your name out there. Yeah. So yeah, I I love that that you recognize that too and that you know, it just are, are people finding you like after that book project were you getting referrals from previous clients? Yeah, I had a couple of repeat clients um and then a, a a lot of my newer clients in 2021 kind of found me through the charity or yep. through the project or through someone who was in the book, um, mm-hmm. and, you know, found out about me that way. Google, Instagram and word, word of mouth have been my top referral sources. Yeah. So nice. yeah. And I did a lot of promoting of the book on Instagram. Yeah, no, that's great for sure. And well, you mentioned too winter time because mm-hmm. you're in Virginia near I Richmond. Am. So it's not a horrible winter, but it's not like 
hey, let's go out and shoot. It's great. We love winter. Like- Our winters are cold and, and nasty. Like we get maybe two days of snow. The rest is just like brown, right. bare trees, wet, slushy rain. It's it's not pretty. It's yeah. not like we're in Colorado or Vermont or the Pacific Northwest where it's like snow. Right. Yeah, right. We don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I, I, I feel your pain. And yeah. in Pittsburgh even, like we'd get a decent an amount of snow but even when there wasn't snow the palette was actually really pretty because it was cloudy all the time so you mm-hmm. had kind of the gray soft light in the brown trees and it was just kind of like this muted palette yeah it actually photographed really beautifully but now that i'm in charlotte i'm in the south which the whole reason i moved here is because we get more sunshine but our winter <laughs> is usually still really freaking sunny mm-hmm. so it's horrific to photograph in because you're like, oh, this beautiful blue sky and dead trees and dead yep. grass. Like, yep. that doesn't go together. <laughs> no, yeah. And a lot of clients are like, mm, we just see brown and, and bare trees. Like, we don't right. see what you see. And so, you know, getting convincing them to like, oh, no, I promise you it's going to be gorgeous. Like, let's right. just go out and do it. But I actually have been doing um, a lot of upland hunts in uh-huh. uh you know, in the season is in the winter anyways, like that's when you want to go photograph. Yeah. Um, it's better for the dog. It's better. Like that's when you hunt. Um, and it's just turned out to be, you know, really great. That's fantastic. So yep. how far is it? a? Cause I don't think of Richmond and think of like, there's a prison hunting. Is there, yeah. is there a, a, it's probably like one of these communities that a lot of cities have these different communities. Well, there's more wild, wild bird hunting, um, out kind of, you know, Western Virginia, but there's, um, a handful of preserves in the Richmond area. Yeah. Uh, You know, Richmond is considered like an hour outside the city. So there's, um, yeah, there's a handful of preserves that are nearby and they just do, you know, pheasants and chucker and quail. Yeah. 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 How did you get involved in that? Uh, By accident. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up, I grew up hunting deer with my dad. So like, I've always been comfortable, you know, in the sport and around guns and, um, one day my husband was driving down uh, route six and there was, he passed this preserve and he was like, people like bird dogs. You need to, you need to go talk with them. And I was like, yeah, all right. So, um, you know, it took about a month to, you know, gather up the courage to make that phone call. And I was like, hi, I'm a pet photographer and I want to come out and photograph some dogs. And I'm, can I do that? And they were like, what do you, what? <laughs> but, but, but they let me come out and man, from the first moment I was hooked. Like, yeah, it's, just, it's a different type of photography. Right. Um, but it's also a different type of dog. Like they are in the field to uh-huh. do one thing and that is to per- point or flush birds. Yeah. And it's just the natural instinct and the drive and then the teamwork between the handler and the dog. Like it's just, it's amazing. And yeah. half of, like most of these dogs are, you know, they're not just hunting dogs. They are companion dogs. Like they go out in the field and, and flush some birds and then they come home and sleep in your bed. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's, um, it's been, a, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, our next dog will be a, a Brittany bird dog yeah. because of this and just yeah. how, how hooked I am. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So those sessions are definitely probably more like documentary style. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, for a full hunt, we'll go out there and document everything. And, um, you know, like I'll get photos of the dogs on point and then they'll, you know, retrieve them a bird and, you know, and then at the end we'll do like, if we have time in the sun yeah. setting, we'll do some silhouettes. There's yeah. a really beautiful hill out there or we'll do like some companion shoots. Um, but most of the time it's, you know, strictly hunting. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. fantastic. How do you have those types of sessions? Is it uh, like an all inclusive type thing, or do they do like a session fee and purchase artwork like you do your normal portrait I, clients? Yep, I run them exactly like my normal portrait clients. Yeah, all yep. right, that's fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then so many questions. This is <laughs> such like a, a unique when you started doing this. So it's like, oh. That's interesting. I never even considered it, never even mm-hmm. thought about it. But yeah, there's this whole community of people that go hunting with their dogs. I actually have a client um, just booked a session for the fall that they have two German short haired pointers that they Love use them. for hunting. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I was talking to them and same kind of thing. I mean, they love these dogs, like uh-huh. obsessed with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even so much like I am venture to say, 
these potential people are like the even more on point target market than just the normal, like, Hey, I love my dog. He lives in my house because of the training they've done with the dog. Like their relationship is just so much more powerful. And I'm not saying any of you guys out there that like, (laughs) well, whatever, I have a super powerful, deep relationship with my dog. Of course you do. Of course you do. But like the general, like Joe Schmo, Hey, I just have a dog and I take him for a walk and Mm -hmm. he hangs out in the house, you know? Yeah. They love their dog, but like it goes deeper when you're really working with your dog. Yes. Yes. And you know, whether that's working with them, like with hunting or, you know, any type of dog sports or, you know, scent detection, like when you have a dog that you are, you have that much teamwork and, and, um, yeah, just training put into them. It, It is a, just a deeper level. It's kind of, it's like a little onion, you know, you just right. pull, peel back that layer and, uh, and you have just more of a, of a bond with them when you're doing something with your dog. Yeah. No, yeah. I love it. I love it. All right. I want to go back to, for a second, to that first phone call <laughs> when you called the preserve and you're like, Hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a pet photographer. Can I photograph some dogs? So, I, mean, all, I, I wasn't confident in that phone call yeah, at all no, like, well I, we've all been there we've all been there so like how long were you like playing this phone call over in your month in your head like how long leading up to it oh my gosh. And, and just like oh i'll do it tomorrow and it was like probably on that to-do list for so long i'll, I'll do that next week oh it's it, friday it was, it's already four o'clock i'll call next i'll call it was on Monday. literally like six weeks so i mean my husband told me about this preserve like four times before I was like, okay, yes, I will put it on my to-do list. And then like, I agonized over that phone call. Like, I, what if they don't like me? What if right? they say no? What, what, if, what if this? What if that? And it was one of the easiest phone calls. They were like, yeah, sure, come on out. <laughs> like, oh, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. But I guarantee you the next time I have to call another business, I'm going to agonize over that. Right. It won't be for six weeks. It'll probably be for like six days, but yeah. I am going to have that like, you know. Yeah. Well, and then yeah. the time after that, it'll hopefully be six hours and then six mm-hmm. minutes and, yeah. and then, you know, and then I'll just still going to be phone. six seconds of, ag- <laughs> of agonizing, but then you'll know just like, just freaking do it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just do it. You're going to continue agonizing it until you do it because that's going to be eating away at like this mental uh-huh. bandwidth in the back of your head of just like, oh, I should make that phone call. Oh, I should make also, that phone call. Also, what is the worst that could happen? Right. They could, they could say no. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a great day. Right. simple as that <laughs> i think we build it up that they're going to be like no and by the way you need to shut down your business because right? you're a horrible person and i'm going to tell everyone that you called me <laughs> yeah, exactly that is what people yeah that is absolutely what you think <laughs> it's not it's, not accurate at all no i know it's all just so uh yeah completely like, inaccurate and yeah. insane what it's we think is we actually going to happen yeah oh, <laughs> all yeah. right moral of the story this is your action item for this podcast all of you guys out there sitting on some phone call or email you need to send Make it just do it <laughs> oh my gosh all right so you went out he's photographed do they have i'm thinking like you know fox hunting like they have like rides and like they get together in groups so for like the upland hunting stuff do they get together on like all kind of together and they go out and hunt or are there just different people going there on their own periodically? Well, both. Um, so the preserve that the one that we're talking about that I called, they've got 15, they've got a lot of fields. Yeah. So like you can, you know, a bunch of groups can go out at a time. Um, they also have their own guides there um, yep. and their own dogs. So it, you know, I don't have a dog, but I could go and hire a guide with a dog and go okay. out and, and hunt. And so I originally went out on one of those. The um, owners of the preserve, they went out and it's the lead trainer there. He, um, he went out with me with his three dogs and I photographed his dogs while they were on a like a corporate fun hunt. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was just... I don't know. I didn't know what I was getting myself into at the time. <laughs> um, there was so much walking and uh, so much cardio and I'm not a cardio person, um, but I loved it. I enjoyed it so much. And, um, you know, watching the dogs work and like just getting up in action. And luckily these dogs were very, very well trained to yeah. where like they would hold a point for about five minutes. So like, wow. I mean, I had all the time in the world to like set up and get the shot. And uh, it was just, it was, incredible yeah how, how much gear do you like just take a backpack of just kind of some like a longer lens of what you need or are you yeah, dragging I, all your gear um i typically will go out with um i'll start the shoot with a 70 to 200 
And because, you know, you go out there and you go back to the car and then you go out there and go back to the car and like give the dogs a break, switch dogs, get some water. Okay. Um, So it's about three times. So I'll go out there and I'll start with the 70 to 200 and then I'll switch to the 24 to 70 and then I'll probably end on the 70 to 200. Um, But I've also started incorporating some video with that too. Yeah. So I'll take the, um, the 70 to 200 out there uh, and do some video and then also do some photography. Yeah. Are you just flipping back and forth on your, your main camera doing mm-hmm. video and stills? Yeah. 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 Ooh. The R5 makes it super easy to do that. Yeah. 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 It's it's nice. Literally one button. <laughs> You're like, boop. Yep. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Well, this wasn't, we didn't intend for this to be like an upland hunting um, thing, <laughs> but I just find it all so fascinating. Um, one more question about, about this is, all right, you went out, you did some images. You're like, ah, oh, this is interesting. You started to love it. What was the process like? Because this is kind of like the horse world too, where it's like a lot of people know each other and it's not like you're going to put out a, you know, a Facebook thing or a groomers because it's mm-hmm. such a select small niche of people. Yeah. Um, so how did you kind of reach new clients for this genre? Um, I kind of just developed a relationship with the, um, with the preserve and yeah. I would go out there and, um, do, you know, like just complimentary photos for them, um, of their training. I would yep. go out there, um, you know, just I kind of did a lot of free stuff (laughs) in the beginning just to be out there and meet people, get to know people. And then, you know, you just pick up the phone and call different preserves and do the same thing with them. Um, I'm going to, this year, I'm going to do a, uh, another book project, but it's all going to be about upland hunting dogs. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. You just, you just put yourself out there, make those relationships and just, you know, hang around long enough and enough people Mm -hmm. will get to know you and they'll tell their friends and, yeah, there's also a lot of crossover um, with the people who hunt out at that preserve, and also the people who um, go to the underwater uh, the, the dog pool that yeah. I have a relationship with. So there's a lot of crossover um, with those clients. So if yeah. they knew me from Paul's to Swim, they might know me out at the preserve, and vice versa. Oh, nice! Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, the one um, the one thing I want to touch on is you said you did a lot of free work at the beginning, mm-hmm. and I feel like there's the stigma of you know armchair quarterbacks just piling on people that like oh I'm going to photograph this for free for this particular business or this group of you can't do that can't do the blah 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 like. You can definitely do that if you have a, a long term plan. You know, yeah. like like if if you are not upset about it, there is no reason not to, uh, you know, go out and say, "Hey, I would like to, you know, make a relationship with you." Here's how mm-hmm. something I'm happy to do for you. You're building this quid pro quo, quo with this other business. Like yeah. you have a long term relationship you want to build, which is very different, I think, than just like. I don't know, someone calls you and there is no more symbiotic relationship. And you're like, yeah, okay, I'll do that for free. Okay, don't do that. (laughs) I I absolutely agree with you. Absolutely. Now, I mean, you know, you want to kind of put a limit or put, Mm -hmm. um, maybe not a limit, but just expectations in place and boundaries. Yeah. So Uh where you don't feel taken advantage of, but if it's, if it's a relationship that's going to benefit you both, if you're getting, you know, tens of thousands of dollars selling artwork, yeah, you can, you can, give away a few <laughs> sessions right. in order to get that money. Like otherwise right. I wouldn't have that money if people didn't know about me. Right. So I, yeah, I'm happy to do that kind of stuff, you know, yeah. every now and then. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. All right. So good. So those are your winners. What is the season generally for the Upland? Um, so the season technically runs September to April, but September, it's still so hot in Virginia and yeah. it, getting into April, it gets a little hot too. So, um, the best times is really November, December through like February. Yeah. Um, maybe mid March. So that is fantastic because yeah, no one else is doing portrait sessions then mm-hmm. unless you have a studio. Oh like, yeah. And I, I refuse to yeah. have a studio. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, this, this does Refused. not fit into my views of how that I want to run my business. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay. Hey, it's important to know these things. Um, I love it. So you have that in the winter. And then mm-hmm. Virginia is also pretty darn hot in the summer. Oh, um, it's awful. I know me, I really like try not to shoot in July and August if I do just like morning sessions only or just like 
lake water sessions in the evening. Yep. Um, because it's just too darn hot. Like if it's yeah. gonna be 90 degrees, the dog's tongue's gonna be out the whole time. <gasps> And we're just going to be miserable. I'm going to be miserable. Like, let's just not even do it. I had so, a session last yeah. night um, that I would have rescheduled, uh-huh. but it was already rescheduled twice due to rain. <laughs> right. And I was like, we just have to do this because it's only going to get hotter. Right. And it was, it was like 90 degrees. It's yeah, it was at hot 630. This week. It was, it was awful. Um, luckily we ended in the pond, but yeah, yeah I won't in, in, in July, uh, June, July, and August, I won't do any sessions if there's not some type of water aspect to it. Right. Right. I'm not a morning person. I'm not going to get up in the morning. And still, even in the mornings, it gets hot at like 7.30. Right. There's just right. no point. <laughs> right. <No. laughs> well, and the sun rises at like, you know, 5.50 in June. I'm like, um, I don't mind mornings, but that's not really ha- early. Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So tell us a little bit about your other partnership. Did you have the um, underwater dog partnership where you were photographing at the pool. Um, mm-hmm. that was prior to you going full time. You've had that going for a yeah. while. Yeah. So, um, that was another phone call that I agonized over <laughs> forever. And I remember being in an elevate call and y'all were like, just do it. And it's like, <laughs> okay, but she's not going to like me. I don't know why. I don't know why. I mean, I'm a likable person. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, you are a likable person. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I wasn't trying to be cocky. <laughs> um, no, but I, I called her up and I was like, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. Like, do you think your clients would be into this? Um, and she said, yeah, absolutely. So I came out there did a, uh, a few free shoots for her also. Um, and then, yeah, I just, we have a great partnership. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I really love, I really love them. They're great. That's people. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So and do you so, do those mostly summer? Is it outdoors or they have an indoor a, they, and outdoor, right? They have indoor and outdoor. I have done indoor um, photos, but until I get the right setup, yeah. Um, with all the strobes and everything that like I truly, really need to make the yeah. indoor perfect. Uh, it, they're okay. They're yeah, yeah, not, yeah. you know, so I, I mainly stick to the outdoor pool. Yeah. Um, they open it up in April, but it, or May, but it's still a little too cold yeah. um, to get in the water all day. Um, so I'll do June, July, August for I, underwater stuff and then pool. I, love just the looking at your calendar of like all right upland hunts in the winter we got uh-huh. the pool in the summer and then it leaves beautiful spring and fall for like the private client shoots oh, which yeah. is when we're the busiest for that anyway yep yeah i i really lucked it out or lucked into this well some of it was skill too i picked up, <laughs> I picked up the phone and made those calls but you yeah did. I, you did yeah it was Absolutely. um i'm really glad at how it's worked out so far. yeah Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So good. So good. Oh my gosh. This is all such good stuff. Um, I also want to chat to about, um, kind of a big change you made in your business this year. Oh, two that so far this year we are recording June 1st. So we're almost halfway through the year Mm -hmm. and you've been working less. You've been making more. You've like nailed down an inquiry process a bit more because let's face it. How many of you guys out there ask yourself for real, have an actual inquiry process or are you totally just like flying by the seat of your pants whenever you get an inquiry and you're like, ah, it's like that office clip. You seen that office clip? It's happening. Oh my God, it's happening. What's the procedure, everybody? What's the procedure? Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. You have to write down, uh, have to have systems and processes and write down. Oh, I you know, love the yeah. systems and processes. <laughs> oh, I hated them at first, but you know, they've, they've worked out really well for me. Yeah. Well, those- things people here's the thing i think people look at a system and process and they think oh it's gonna like pigeonhole me into this thing and take away freedom Mm -hmm. but in actuality it gives you more freedom because you can free your brain to think of other things because this is done and you have a process and you know it's going to work and the process you can tweak to make sure it really works really well yes um and then you have data too of where processes are breaking down because there's talk to people all the time that are like, you know, I need more clients. Okay. Well, where do we need those more clients? Like how many leads are you getting? Well, first of all, the question is what marketing have you done? And usually it's like, uh, 
uh, I've posted the- to Facebook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we need to market our business. Um, you know, so then it's like, all right, how many leads have you gotten? Like how many inquiries have you gotten in your business? Um, or how many emails have you gotten? How many people have inquired? What's the rate from that inquiry to booking? And then, you know, what's your average sale? So those are all different pieces that you can focus on to increase average sale, to increase the number of people that go from inquiry to booking, to increase the number of people that go from leads to inquiries and to increase the number of leads. So we have all these places we can focus on, but you know, people get overwhelmed and they're just like, uh, I don't know. It should all just happen. Yeah. Unfortunately. I, <laughs> yeah. I still do sometimes get into that. Like, Oh, I wish everything would just fall into my lap. Um, <laughs> right, you know, right. instead of actually like You'll working for things. Human nature. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, you definitely have to put, uh, systems in place. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it has helped freed up things. Like, um, my inquiries, I would have a problem, like an inquiry would come in uh-huh. and I would try to get them to, like book a call with me. Right, right. And so that was the next step. So you're part of your booking process is, hey, let's get on a call to yes. go over things. Yes. So yeah, okay. Um, to then decide if you want to book. Yep. And you know, I, when I first started out, I would uh, schedule Zoom calls and we would mm-hmm. do the entire thing over Zoom. And we were, you know, I would talk to people for like, um, you know, 45 minutes, an hour. Yeah. Most of them were book, would book, but they would also book at a, at a lower price point. Yep. Um, I think it was 350 at that time. And, um, so it was great. I spent an hour on the call with them. We kind of, you know, got most everything covered and where we're going to do the session and all that kind of fun stuff. But then I would still have to touch base with them again before the session. But having them book that initial call, some people would drop off. Some people would ghost me. It was just hard. It was harder to get that to happen. So now what I've done, an inquiry comes in on my website it is immediately redirected to a page where it has a video of me video! saying, hi, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I'm, I'm Kristen. <laughs> this is how we're going to work together. I'm so excited. So our first step is you are going to use this calendar that I've linked below to book your call. I'm going to yep. give you a call and we're going to talk about you know your vision, logistics, details, and then you're going to decide if you want to book with me or not. Yep. And since implementing that, I have only had like, two people not book that, um, that call. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, two, two is nothing when I don't tell you how many leads have came in, but there's been, <laughs> there's been some leads. I just don't have the number in front of me. So right, it's, right, right. it's a very small yeah. amount of people who has not, have not booked that call. Right, um, but right. now I also get on a phone call with them and we spend like 20 minutes. So I'll, I'll ask them the questions, talk uh-huh. about their vision. I'll talk to them about my process and then I'll talk to them about my pricing. Yeah. And then they can decide right then and there. So I'm spending like 20 minutes with them uh-huh. instead of spending an hour before before they decide, yes, I want to book with me, will you? Or no, this is not the right time. Or no, you're just way too expensive. Sorry. Right, right. You know. So were they seeing any pricing before no. the call? No. I yeah. took all pricing off my website. Yeah. Even yeah. like your session fee, whatever. I took it's just all pricing all of it. off my Ooh, website. I have a I have a um much higher uh, session fee, but yep. you get a much uh, a, a lot of artwork credit back. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, oh gosh, you know, this is so important because here's the thing. So many photographers in their inquiry process, you know, have somebody fill out that inquiry form and then nothing, they, they can't take another action immediately. Mm-hmm. It becomes a, even if the photographer sends an email right away, like the person still isn't seeing that immediately. Like yeah. they, unless they're actually just opening their email right after, they're not seeing that right away. And your potential clients already taken one action. Mm-hmm. So to get them over that hump of like, Hey, I actually inquired. That was a huge, that was like Kristen making that call to the hunt. <laughs> I mean, that's a, a big thing that they took action. So let's reward them. And then if you put in front of them, another small action they can take right then and there, uh, this is actually studied. There's actual studies. I don't have the numbers. I don't know what it's called, but it's like these micro actions and people are so much more likely to just go ahead and take that next Mm -hmm. action right then and there. And by having that video, I think the video is a critical piece of this. I agree. Yeah. Did you have them uh, able to book on a thank you page without a video in the past? 
Um, no, I didn't have a thank you page. I was the photographer who sent the email and waited gotcha. for them. Yep. Uh, uh-huh. Because then they had to open the email and then they had right. to click a link and then yep. they had to schedule. Yeah. Uh-huh. So now I have uh, the page and it has the video. Um, it has my dog in it that you can yeah. see some personality. They can yeah. decide right then and there. Like uh-huh. if, they, 100%. if they watch the video and they're like, oh, this girl's weird. They can. Be, they don't have to book. Right. Maybe that's right. what those two people did. <laughs> right. But, right. Um, I think also with the video, it's really good to um, have closed captions on because sometimes uh-huh. you're not going to be able to, like, maybe you're at work. Or also, um, I have a paragraph that says, like, hey, if you can't watch the video, this is yeah. the gist of what it said. Yeah, book yeah, your call right. here. Um, yeah. So I think that's really important. Also, um, you have to put information in front of people multiple different ways, multiple mm-hmm. different times. Um, they still get that email to book their yep. session if they over the book their call if they hadn't. But the yep. um, the redirect page works really, really great. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh, so good and truly that video, you guys, it's so important because, like Kristen said, they immediately can decide if they connect with you or not. And if they don't, they were never were going to. So they're not mm-hmm. going to be your client. So there's. No There's time, nothing to no lose. No time there. wasted on either yeah. side. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and if they do, they now immediately have more of a connection with you than photographer B or C that doesn't have a video on their website because so much of our communication is nonverbal, even in a video. So, like, even if you can't be there, like you're you're making this connection with them, and then they feel safer mm-hmm. that to make that call to schedule that call because they're already like oh i like her yeah okay yeah. sure i, I mean I yeah also took off the section i used to ask people how they preferred to be contacted ah, I, took, uh-huh. I took that off yeah. um well especially if the one call to action is to book a call then mm-hmm. we're booking a call yeah you know? i want to get i want to get people on the phone i um, mean even if they don't book the call i'll give it like maybe 24 hours and then mm-hmm. i'll send an email and be like hey got your inquiry. I'm going to give you a call. You know, here you go. Um, just yeah. forewarning. I'm going to give you a call. Answer the phone. Yeah. This is my number. Right, um, right. <laughs> you know, and uh, and I'll still pick up the phone call or the phone and, and call people. That was really scary. But it's been, I find that people want to talk to other people, mm-hmm. especially nowadays. <laughs> I mean, at at least for me, I I like talking with people. Um, You get so many emails on a daily basis and then you get so many spam calls. Uh It's kind of like the old snail mail, right? Like when you get a a birthday card in the mail, you feel so good. And like when I get a phone call from someone who isn't trying to like save me money on car insurance, (laughs) I feel really good. I'm like, oh, somebody wants to talk to me. Thanks. Right, right. (laughs) Well, and it becomes part of this whole service of what we're offering. I mean, Mm -hmm. we're a service provider. We're a custom service provider that... We got to talk to people. And I'm one of those people that I I don't love the phone. Uh, Very rarely, like, I don't want to just sit and gab on the phone. I, like, still don't even... I don't mind now. But, like, five years ago, like, I didn't even want to, like, call for pizza. You know? Like, I just (laughs) hated using the phone. Um, But now... I get kind of annoyed if I'm looking at the other business and I just have a quick question and there's no one that I can just call. Cause I know if I go and I fill out the online form and I send it in, it's it's going to be a day. I'm going to miss it. Cause some filter is going to get it in my email. And then like a week later and be like, wait, did I ever hear back from them? Mm -hmm. Let me go search in my email and see. Uh, It's just, sometimes I just want a phone call. (laughs) Sometimes it's it's super quick and easy. And I want to make, um, I want to be accessible to my clients. Yeah. Um, anyway they need. So, yeah. And I don't know about you, but my rate when I get people on the phone, cause that's also what I try to do is get people on the phone. First thing is, um, my rate of booking anyone that I actually talk to is darn near a hundred percent. I would say like 98%, almost every single person books. Yep. Yeah. And I'm sure they're contacting other people as well, but I just actually happen to get back to them oh, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. make it easy for them to book a call. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Oh my goodness. All right, you guys. Inquiries. So important. Mm-hmm. So important. All right. We've covered a lot, but I would love to also just talk about what kind of awaits you in the future and your your future plans for your yeah. business because you've you've got some exciting things down the pike. I do. Um, if I can find a van um, right now, <laughs> you cannot find these vans anywhere. Right, I need to buy a car, and I can't oh even gosh. find a regular car. It's horrible. And then Ford has stopped manufacturing um, until November. So oh, really? Like, yeah. Chip yeah. shortage. 
I I Who guess knows? I didn't yeah. ask questions. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so like, you know, disheartened. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, my goal is to buy a van and, uh, you know, convert that into a uh, camper. I went out to the Pacific Northwest back in May. With your yeah, cat. Last month with my cat Freya for a... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm not crazy, y'all. I just really love it. Whatever, animals. we take our cat to Florida in the wintertime, so I don't want to leave her home for two weeks. Yeah. Well, I also, like, I was going out there by myself to see if, like, van life would be right. something that, like, I could do and I would right. love. It's good. A right. good thing to test. Yeah. Like, let's not invest a hundred grand in a van without investing two hundred uh, that or 2000 to see if I like it first. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. right. So I, t- I knew I was going to be lonely. So I took Freya out there with me and uh, she walks really nicely on a leash and we kind of just explored, <laughs> and, you know, the waterfalls and the trails. And uh, I had a fantastic time and it made me want to do this even more. And while I was out there driving along in my van, uh, the Pet Photographers Club uh, podcast with Arca Dwarf came out and I'm yeah. like, well, if this isn't a sign, I don't know what is. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's my, my goal is to be more like I travel now I'll, I'll fly to anyone anywhere. Yeah. Um, but my goal is to be more of a traveling pet photographer and, um, you know, Arca does like a lot of work in those three months. Right. I, don't, I don't know if I want to like only work for three months. <laughs> I might well, do like the beauty is your business. You can set it up however you want. Exactly. So my <laughs> my my thinking here is like um you know maybe in the summer I can go you know to the Pacific Northwest and like hang out there and do some yep. stuff because I love it out there. Um and just do more road trips and uh you know meeting more people and uh photographing dogs all over the country yeah yeah uh, i mean you know i've been wanting to buy a van for like oh yeah that my first goal was to quit my job and i did that and then my second goal was to buy a van and i'm still not there yet but i will get there yes there's been some extra challenges and the fact that like you can't buy one right now (laughs) yeah yeah but i really i really what i want to do is like take others so i i loved taking freya out yeah. um, and just exploring with her and you know she's a really adventurous cat like she gets on our roof all the time and <laughs> <laughs> she yeah she's crazy but I want uh, to be able to take other people on these adventures with their dog like I would have I would have taken Kona but you know yeah, she's, yeah. she's 14 and she's my soul dog and she's not gonna be she's not travel travelable yeah. That's the right, word. Right. She's not yeah. able to travel like she used to. Um, but I, there's so many, so many things that I'm so glad we have done with her, but I wish I would have also done more with her and taken her on these adventures and like going to these epic places that I want to go with my dog and just being yep. out in nature. And um, that's what I want to do for other people. Yep. And, um, you know, whether that's, we just, you know, there's a, there's a handful of my clients now that I would absolutely just like, bring along with me in my van and some of my cl- my cl- clients have their own campers and like they do right. this stuff anyways but like let's just drive out to you know devil's bathtub and hike that trail and get some great photos of our dogs yep. just like playing in the water and being in the woods and um you know it's just it's being out in nature with your dog that's a that's a big thing yeah. for me personally yep. and in my business and uh, yeah. i just want to do that with more people I love it. I love it. Well, I mean, when you create something like that, it you attract the people that, you know, also are into that too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. <laughs> Kristen, this has been an awesome interview full of so many good things. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to fill us in on the past two years. Of course. Thanks um, for having me back. Of course. And can't wait to hear all the other future things going on. Yeah. We'll help you let them know where you can say, th- oh my gosh, let me try that again. <laughs> let people know where they can find you online, first of all. Um, you can find me at uh, kristenjmurray.com. Uh, you can also find me um, on the socials at Kristen Murray Photography. Um, I'm more active on Instagram than I am on Facebook. Um, but those, yeah, those are the two. Nice. main places excellent and yeah. are you still doing some web design stuff as well yes on Squarespace? I, I am um yep. when i that's i typically do that also in the summer when things yeah. are a little slow um 
but yeah, I've got some templates for sale and then I can do some custom work for people as well, or just ad hoc. Like, yeah. Hey, I need- yeah and, if, and if you guys are in the Academy, Kristen taught our Squarespace 101 course. So mm-hmm. if she can help you get set up on that Squarespace, self-directed there, or if you need some extra help and you say, Hey, I want to outsource some things. Kristen's your girl. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Kristen, thank you again so much for being here with us. Yeah, and this um, is great. Yeah, we'll follow along on all your adventures and um, talk to you soon. Thanks, Nicole. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Everybody, see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Hair of the Dog podcast. This was episode number 149. If you want to check out the show notes for access to any of the resources that we mentioned, simply go to www.hairofthedogacademy.com slash 149. Thanks for listening to this episode of Hair of the Dog podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please take a minute to leave a review. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming episodes. One last thing. If you are ready to dive into more resources, head over to our website at www.hairofthedogacademy.com. Thanks for being a part of this pet photography community.